Much love and appreciation, family. So for all of the brand new men's and women's shirts that you see in, and the limited edition sneakers that you see here, please visit the comment and or the description. Hey, how you doing? This is Sergio Hito. So this story comes, by the way, of one of my moderators, Tonda. Uh, so I just wanted to shout, give you a shout out and let you know, yes, I saw your messages. You can stop killing me in the messages. I got you. Um, so she wanted me to bring the story to you guys. Um, and another another reason I wanted to also bring it to you guys, because as I looked through um, to really try to find information on him, there's in a sense, technically not a lot. And even for the information that is out there, it seems like a lot of people just aren't aware of the great feat that he is doing um, by bringing this machine that can create free water for people. And I do mean free. I do mean free. Of course, the machine costs money to make, but that's coming out of his, you know, out of his pocket. And it's also coming from um, the foundation um, that he has. I'm going to make sure to link that in the description below, just in case if you want to donate to uh, further help uh, the cause of what Moses West is trying to do for people of the world. And yet again, this is just uh, further proof that we do have the tech to give people free food, uh, free water and free electricity. But I, I'll get into all of that later. So let's get to a little bit of the, uh, the story. Moses West of San Antonio, Texas, has brought water to Flint, Michigan and Puerto Rico all through his atmospheric water generation machine, which extracts moisture from the atmosphere and turns it into water. The science behind it is similar to what you learn in elementary school. It's really just condensation. The same thing that creates moisture when you breathe on a window, for example, is just done on a much, much larger scale. And if all goes well, he'll be bringing it to the Bahamas, where tens of thousands were left homeless after Hurricane Doreen leaving some islands with no power or running water. West and his Water Rescue Foundation could help. Quote, this is a long-term recovery for the people there. And one of the stresses that they do not need is the lack of clean water. The warmer the air outside, the better the machine works. That's the reason why, that's one reason why he thinks the Bahamas would be ideal for, for his generators. One issue is that West currently can't afford to leave his generators where they are permanently. So going to the Bahamas means leaving Flint. Still, he said he is planning on taking the machine to the Bahamas by the end of September if he's able to raise enough money. Calling him Moses with the water. I've had to live with this name Moses for a long time. It took a little bit of time to grow into it. It's not lost on me. <laughs> You may remember this story we released last month as part of our KVU Profile series. This inspiring Austinite is trying to end drought. He has developed a technology that literally creates water out of thin air. Mm. It's a machine that is designed to take the H2O molecule out of the air, and that's it. Moses recently founded the Water Rescue Foundation to put this technology in the hands of people who need it the most. First stop, Puerto Rico. Why do you feel the need to take this technology there to Puerto Rico? This is a prime example of where this can be used. All the water in Puerto Rico has been contaminated. I don't want to celebrate the holidays when I know that so many Americans in Puerto Rico are going through this and I have a technology that can help them. This just doesn't help your bottom line. This is something that gives people hope. Hope is something Puerto Ricans need with most of the islands still without power and clean water after this hurricane season. You may be asking yourself, how will this work? Moses thought of everything. With the units in Puerto Rico, there's two ways you can power it. You can power it from the grid or you can power it for, from its own internal diesel engine. It's getting over 30 gallons of water per gallon of diesel. Well, you're talking about a Christmas present for an, uh, a group of people that need it desperately. It's the least that we can do. The biggest response has come from people in the outlying areas where FEMA hasn't reached them yet. No mm -hmm. one's reached them. They found out the about the, uh, the KVU interview and their relatives here got in contact with me. They, they were saying, if you can, whatever you gotta do, please get this technology there. there. This isn't going to be over. This is going to be an ongoing situation in Puerto Rico mm -hmm. for years to come. Do you feel like this is gonna be your legacy? Mm -hmm. I never wanted to be famous or anything, but if it's a legacy that uh, does some good, yeah, I'll, I'll take that. 
Welcome back. Take a look at this. This water producing technology is making a stop in Austin this weekend before heading to Puerto Rico to help hurricane victims. But the man behind it all, Moses West, still needs your help. He's here this morning to talk more about what you can do to help him with this great project. Good morning, Mr. West. Good morning. And for people who don't know, you know, we've done a few stories on you and what it is you do. But for those people who don't know, talk to us about your invention. The invention, what it is, it's a machine that pulls moisture out of the air. Um, water comes in three, three forms. Yeah, we learned this in second and third grade, but everybody <laughs> right. forgets it. But I never forgot those little pictures of everything, the uh, little cows and everything in the field and the <laughs> mountains and the water evaporating from the sea, and that's mm -hmm. called the hydrologic cycle. Mm -hmm. And now our hydrologic cycle has been disrupted somewhat due to increasing uh, temperature of the planet, mm -hmm. evaporation, so the water is it's disrupted. But here's the technology, what it does is it pulls moisture out of the air, condenses it, one of the three forms, liquid, solid, and a gas. It takes it in the gaseous state and produces industrial quantities of water. Wow, and I mean, this is just, how did you come up with the idea to really do this and make this, you know, kind of speed up nature, so to speak, to make more water? Well, I, I, I looked at what other companies were doing and I saw some of the machines that they had out there and all the machines they had, it, 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 took in too much power. So when I first started to present this to venture capitalists, yes, and they... Uh, <laughs> well, you gotta get the money to make it somewhere. We yeah. Right? <laughs> the, um, part of the problem was it used too much energy. Mm -hmm. So then I, I started researching other methods of how to do it and I found a research company and a partner with them and we got it down to a place where it could make water at the lowest power consumption and then I put it together to make mass quantities of water and then I got with the Texas A&M, uh, Dr. 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 Les Shepard and we crunched out some numbers and calculated on what we could do after we finished the pilot proje project with the Texas Commission of Environmental Quality mm -hmm. and it's an incredible numbers on using excess power it comes out to four trillion one hundred billion gallons of water annually what you could produce with this technology wow. using waste energy. Wow. wow, I mean it's amazing because we think about the water shortage that you know they're projecting for our state, for our area. You, you take all this and you've created the Water Rescue Foundation. Tell us about the foundation and your mission to go to Puerto Rico. The, the, the Water Rescue Foundation, I started this because you can't wait for, you can't wait for government grants and loans to, to provide emergency assistance to people. Uh, there's, enough, there's enough donors out there that want to see this take place and happen that understand this technology mm -hmm. much more than some of the people that uh, administer our government. Mm -hmm. So they've seen this and the best way to do it is to donate to this foundation. My manufacturers, we build the equipment and we give it to the people that need it. Some of the um, uh, emails that I get from Puerto Rico once they see what they've seen on KBU, which has gone kind of viral, uh, I get emails every day, please send a machine to my town. So we have the large units and the small units and all the donations that come in, we continue to build these machines and give them away to people that need them. Mm. That, I mean, that is fantastic and what a way to bring wow. fresh, clean water to, yes. to people. I mean, it is absolutely fantastic what, what you're doing. Thank you so much for joining us. And so, guys, don't forget, it's called the uh, Water Rescue Foundation, correct? That's who you can check out, Google them so you can get more information. Or, of course, go to kvu.com because we have plenty of information. And if you want to check out the atmospheric water generation technology, you want to see it for yourself today, well, Moses will be having a show this weekend. He'll be at the VFW Post 8787, which is located at 500 VFW Road, so they can head on out there, meet you, shake your hand, and hopefully give you some money so we can get more of these machines out there and making water for people, right? Yes, I'll be happy to show them around, give them a tour <laughs> of the machine, 
show you parts of it no one else has seen and explain to you how it works. Perfect. Sounds great. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Jenny, we'll talk <laughs> thank back Thank you for having you. me. Welcome back. Well, today is World Water Day and joining us is Moses West. You may remember him. He's running a water rescue foundation to bring fresh drinking water to anywhere in the world. Now he's giving us an update on his mission. Moses, first, of course, thank you for being here. Uh, I first want to just start with the foundation. Um, talk about again, what was the motivation for creating this foundation? Oh, the motivation for the foundation was uh, simple for me. I've been working with this technology and making improvements for it, to it for years. And uh, I needed to get it away from just the, the federal government aspect of what they want to do with it in the way of groundwater recharge, mm -hmm. uh, supplying soldiers with water in the field, when there's so many civilians around the world that absolutely need fresh, clean water. Mm -hmm. So the foundation, I set that up so that I could take machines, build machines, and uh, donate them to people around the world that needed them. Uh, the greatest example, the best example, is what we did right here. Mm -hmm. Thank you for you all at KVU, for KVUE, for helping us get that done. Mm -hmm. But uh, that machine going to Puerto Rico and what we did there actually saved people's lives. We supplied uh, 3,500 people with drinking water wow. for an entire wow. island after the hurricane. And today, on World, uh, World Water Day, what we have now is we have uh, some rivers overflowing in the United States, uh, possibly 200 million Americans that are going to be without, uh, without clean drinking water. Mm -hmm. And here we sit in Texas with a technology that can actually help everyone out there. We have some schools on the south side of San Antonio uh, Price Elementary, where they have a little bit of cam contamination in the water. And uh, this is a system being recognized on World Water Day as something that we can use everywhere around the world. You can certainly see the difference being made. Now tell me this, for someone who isn't as knowledgeable about water and the issues that we have around the world, and in Texas, um, how much of a problem is it really getting these people the water they need? The, to transport water around, if you look at what we paid, uh, cost, the cost of shipping water to Puerto Rico, mm -hmm. they came out to $363 million to ship water, fly it there to Puerto Rico, $363 million. The water situation in the state of Texas, where our population is going to double in so many years, mm -hmm. we're not going to be able to support that, that population growth with the amount of water that we have right now. And so part of my mission is I've been pushing and getting people to understand that our pure source of water is the atmosphere. And with this technology, we can remove this water and use it. It always stayed um, kind of in the background until I've reduced the energy consumption by seven to tenfold. Mm -hmm. And that's what uh, we're going to start researching right now at Texas A&M yeah. and with the military, join together and, and get this to the place where it can be municipal water supply, groundwater recharge, but the world crisis right now that we have with water is one that is going to sneak up on us if we're not prepared. If someone's watching this right now and they want to get involved, they want to help, what's the best way someone can do that? The best way you can do it right now is you need to donate to the Water Rescue Foundation. There are some specific schools around the state of Texas that need this technology because they found lead in the water Mm. There's contamination and chemicals from old military bases that have closed down. And we have these machines now where the children can have water at school. Mm -hmm. Plus, the schools now are moving towards a new um, curriculum. They're learning the uh, 17 tenets of uh, sustainability. So they, they're, the kids at school, they're growing hydroponic fruits and vegetables, and they're, they're giving food away to food banks. And this machine is absolutely perfect for them because they can use solar power to produce water, mm -hmm. learn how to work with solar power, learn about this technology, learn about hydroponics, learn about sustainability, mm. supply the city, the local food bank with organic fruits and vegetables. I would like to see the little schools and the kids, the six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 year olds, compete with Whole Foods. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. On organic foods. Right. And it's a, I really enjoy that too, going to the schools and talking to the kids, but it's, um, it's heartbreaking sometimes to see uh, some of the damage that, uh, yeah. that has been done to it, the youngest members of our society for not having clean water. Well, Moses, you're helping make a difference, helping 
alleviate some of those issues. So thank you for what you're doing and thank you for coming on Midday. We appreciate it. I appreciate it. Yeah. And please donate to the Water Rescue Foundation and help us get this done. There you go. Thank you, Moses. Thank you. We'll be right back after the break. <laughs> I'm not claustrophobic because I had to crawl inside this thing and clean it. No. Yeah, way. <laughs> because the thing about it is, not only am I the CEO of my company, I'm also responsible mm -hmm. for the water quality. So I have to make sure that anything that touches the water that I produce, it meets or exceeds, not meets, exceeds federal standards. It has to make meet my standards. Rescue. So, we'll and so, <laughs> so I've squirreled away couple thousand gallons of water. Okay. I'm sorry. That's okay. So this is the water that I like clean water. It's in the tank. I'm from Flint. I love clean water. It's okay. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> I just want to so taste it. All, all this water that's in this tank right now, this is my spare water. That so, tastes good. So when that, so when that unit starts to run down during the day, when there's such a high demand on it. Right. I just hooked my pipe here. I got my little pump in the back of the car, sit in here. Tie into the this side of the filter on this side, shut that valve, and I pump the water back into the tank. Wow. So it's been filtered twice now before it goes to anybody. So this is mm. this is my reserve when I have a big demand on water. So every day I try to throw 500 gallons in here. So one thing you have to remember, I'm, I'm one man with one machine, one tank, and I'm supplying a significant portion of this island with water. Now, if you had 10 of me doing the same thing, you supply the whole island with water. And if you had mm. me one person, with this setup over in Puerto Rico right now in a town, they could supply that town with water. All you need is this and that. And one person can do it. You know, it's gotta be an old school person that's not afraid of a little bit of work, but right. you know, you can get it done. Cause I've been doing it. I'm actually responsible since I started this company. I've made well over 1 million gallons of water. Amazing. Well over 1 million gallons. I've produced that myself. Run it. Yeah. Have the guy sit in a little travel trailer or something, just run it and make water. And if it's too cold where you're at, go drive south until you find the right temperature where you can make water. So did you say this is a FEMA funded project? Or? No, this is a Moses West funded project. <laughs> That's right. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a 100% disabled vet and uh, service connected, first Gulf War. And uh, I use my military retirement pay for this wow. mm. uh, yeah donations from friends donations from the website but uh, mainly uh, I, I gotta I have to maintain some kind of buffer there so basically right now I'm running this whole operation on my on my my retirement so y'all paying me your taxes pay me my taxes pay my income pays for this so basically indirectly y'all are you know you're getting the service of it. Wow. You got my services in the military. Now I'm kind of giving back, I guess. They drained fuel. Uh, they added something to the coolant lines. They played with the electronics. And that's not typical vandal stuff. Less than a week after bringing free water to Flint, Moses West says the green machine he designed to do just that was vandalized. Once they broke into the machine and uh, uh, they destroyed the, the generator, very technical they knew what they were doing it wasn't just you know random vandalism not at all uh, they destroyed the battery uh, they put metal in the fuel system 
I saw that when I was cleaning the fuel filter. West is a military veteran who travels across the country to areas in crisis, bringing a machine he designed like this one that literally makes fresh water out of thin air. He put the green machine out for people along Saginaw Street on Thursday and was hoping to make a big impact. He says before the vandalism, they were giving hundreds of people free water every day. You got to look at uh, I'm making anywhere from 1,200 to 2,000 gallons of water a day and give it away for free. That's a that's, that's a lot of that's a lot of money out of somebody's pocket someplace. Wes says that he can only speculate as to why someone would try to destroy something that was just trying to help the community. Wes says he hopes to have the green machine back open right. and working again soon with some anti vandalism features added as well. It actually sits in the air. I set it on the ground because it was the ground was a little bit unstable for it to sit on the legs. But now I've got all support for the legs. All 21,000 pounds though, it'll sit up in the air and make it uh, harder for people to get to to do devious things to the machine. In Flint, Rachel McCrary, WNEM TV5. So hopefully um, anybody who just so happened to watch um, the video, hopefully you learned a lot about Mr. West and the reason why he's doing exactly um, what he's doing and why also he did not um, give over the machine um, or he didn't want, you know, really any funding or anything to do with the government because you heard him say that they had their own plans for how they wanted to deal with water and do their own, you know, types of things. And then also whenever you happen to give over an idea or a patent to the government, it's over. Whatever good use you wanted that to, um, if let's say you have something for free energy, right? Excuse me. Free electricity. Um, I promise you, they're going to find some way to make people pay for it. whatever you, you, you want to do literally for everybody. They're going to put a charge on it. We have tech out here to give people free Wi-Fi. We have uh, tech out here uh, to the point where the light bulbs that you naturally use, those can um, give off Wi-Fi signals. Right. Um in different countries uh, such as I want to say Australia or uh, other countries, you have people that came up with generators like basically once you get the generator running, it can run your house. You don't need to have the power company hooking up lines to your house, you know, and as you see here, you have a man that came up with the tech after he looked at what everybody else is doing. He figured out some stuff. And he was like, all right, I got it. And he put together a machine which enables, which uses what naturally occurs in nature on this planet inside of a machine. It takes in the humidity, turns that into gas. And then, you know, of course, I think it also maybe goes through some filtering or whatnot or whatever, but you end result is you get clean water water that's not polluted, water that doesn't have anything that's in the air or in the ground. It is 100% clean and it's ready to be used. Um, but the last video I made sure to show that because that's to show and listen to what he said. He didn't say these were basic everyday people that did this. He said these people were meticulous and they specifically knew what they were doing and what they were going after. They put metal in the filter, uh, they cut the the battery, and they also did something to the uh, to the fuel line. These are people that know exactly what they're doing. Like I said before, what he's doing is the most beautiful, and it's the most awesome thing. This is something that, as people, as as, as you know, a, a species that is on this planet, right, human beings. This is what we're supposed to be doing. This is like if. He's allowed to do this and other people are allowed to come through with the inventions that we have. Society, as we know right now, will be vastly different. It will be I'm, I'm promising you it will be 100 percent vastly different on top of everything that we do right now will be vastly more efficient. And because things are easier to do and it's more efficient, it would also allow people free time to venture into other things like, hey, let's say like people want to, you know, start reading up you know math or you know whatever else like that will in turn enable people to get smart and take in more knowledge because they can relax because they don't have to struggle so hard and worry right 
But as he stated, and I've also stated this too, um, for a lot of other people out here, everything that is free isn't good. And the reason why it isn't good is because it ends up affecting people's bottom line. So let's say you have people that are, because in whether you know it or not, uh, a lot of the bottled water that you guys drink every single day, that's not coming from Fiji. That's not coming from the Poland Springs. That That's not coming from like the Nebraska waterfalls, like whatever they want to you know, call it. A lot of that water comes from the Great Lakes, the main lakes that are around Michigan. And you have places um, off of Chicago, uh, you know, dipping into Lake Erie sucking in water and bottling just they just like filter the water they bottle it up and then charge you a ridiculous amount of money for something that should be free understand what i'm saying and you know i don't normally ask people you know to really share any of my videos because i leave that up to people but because this is such important information this dude is doing such a wondrous and beautiful thing for everybody right uh, I, I would love it if people would share this video because this is this is what I'll tell you to do. If you even even if you don't want to share the video, type in his name and look at all of the videos that they have up and look at the amount of views and look at the comments. It's like the video has been like blacklisted or, or, or whatever you want to call it. It makes no sense why his videos, why his company doesn't have millions upon billions of views because of what he's doing. Like just that by itself, like the whole world should literally be going to his YouTube channel, trying to gather and trying to ask for as much information because there's a lot of areas around the world that are suffering from poor and low quality water. And it just shouldn't be. It just shouldn't be. So um, that's the video, um, you know, I'll try to, I'll, I'll do my best to also keep tabs on it to, you know, further bring you guys anything else that's going on um, with uh, Moses West and anything else the company is doing. And I will make sure to also keep tabs to make sure uh, to see what's going on uh, with the Bahamas um, and how that's, you know, going along with him bringing um, the machine there. But remember, as he stated before, he's one man with one machine. So the machine that he has, he has to take that from Flint and then he has to place that somewhere else. So it would be, you know, much appreciated if people could donate to um, the cause along with if you happen to know anybody that's like a celebrity or you can even throw this in front of their face, this this video, that'd be great. Because the more people, the the because we have a lot of millionaires and billionaires out here, like a Floyd, um, you know, Ice Cube, uh, or Magic Johnson, whoever that you can name, it'd be great that they can throw some money at this. I think on uh, one of the article that I wrote, uh, if I have the numbers correct, I think it costs about three hundred thousand just for one machine. And just think about how many millionaires that we have out here, or just think about how much money as a group we have about what 400 million people uh, or close to in the United States by itself. Just think if everybody literally pulled together $1 and donated it to this foundation. Think of uh, how that can change the world. But you know, it's just me. Um, so let me know what you guys think about this video in the, in the description um, below and I will do my best as always to get back to you. So as always, Peace, love, and stay tuned for the next video.